Hey guys, Dozer here bringing you a new video. Today, gonna be talking about Fab 2.0, what it means for the channel, what it means for all of us, my opinions, reactions, and to kind of clue you into the news going on in the world of Wraith. So let's get right into it. Right off the bat, as a quick summary, Fab 2.0 is how LSS is gonna be treating the game going forward. That applies not only competitive play, but also casual play, future changes to Living Legends, competitive ranking, as well as product releases going forward, how they're structured, what's gonna be in them, and the way that we can expect to be getting new cards and new sets going forward. First thing that's happening is that they are retiring first edition, and by that extension, also unlimited versions. Now there's going to be one set for any one set, one printing, there's not gonna be first and then unlimited, it's just the set, and each set will contain rainbow foil, fabled, and legendaries, as well as the cold foils. So we will be seeing a very different distribution of things going forward. Mainly we'll be seeing uh, cold foils and one in every 24 packs. On average, you know, you've got your commons, your rares, your majestics a little bit more frequently. You'll be getting your rainbow foil legendaries a bit more frequently, your cold foil legendaries a bit less frequently, and we still don't know about the fabled. But generally speaking, the new rarity of Marvel will be there as a way to get some very interesting type of new treatments of cards which will be very interesting to see and i'm sure we'll all be excited for the release of uprising whenever it does come out uh, i'm personally excited for this because ever since i got into the game i buy one box of every set just to open to have fun and do drafting and stuff but uh it's not really the best way to get cards normally the best way to get cards in the most effective cost effective way is to buy singles because people will be opening boxes to get the legendaries and they'll have a ton of majestics and rares and commons left over that they have to move and so you can normally get those cards for pretty cheap which is very good for most players but when you are opening packs say at like a local tournament and that's the prizing that you get for getting a couple wins in the tournament uh it doesn't feel too great to open a pack of basically what amounts to nothing right you paid you know however much money you paid for the tournament and uh you might you know get something positive out of it but hopefully by having more valuable cards and sets going forward Hopefully the overall value of a pack will be more normalized so that, you know, you can expect to get something out of it. And that might push people to be a bit happier about getting those packs when they go to tournaments and having some better local pricing, especially if you're not the person who's taking home the gold every week. Uh, beyond that, they are going to be releasing reprint sets going forward. So they're going to be called historic packs or history packs, and they will have white border cards, which is a big departure from the black border cards that we're used to seeing. Uh, another famous card game has done a similar thing with you know their first editions and their revised versions. However, this is going to be great for a number of reasons for the community. One, it'll put the expensive staples in the hands of the players at a bit easier of a rate just by making there more supply. Um, I'm really excited for that. You know, Personally, I don't need any of the cards that are from the original three sets of Welcome to Wraith, Arcane Rising, and Crucible of War. But a lot of people do, and so it'll be really great to see them get access to those cards for a fair price and hopefully going forward people can uh, appreciate those cards and all their glory even if the white border might not be their favorite thing to look at um you know, me personally I would have gone for like a gray border or you know slightly different like maybe an insignia somewhere on the card but what's done is done and uh if you would like to purchase packs that are these you'll be able to get those before too long here uh, notably as well They'll be doing localized versions of the game for Italian, French, German, Spanish, and as well as the English, obviously. For the non-English, they will be releasing black labeled cards in the foreign languages as a way for you to get access to your black border foreign cards for the original sets. So that's really cool for all the people out there across the pond. Enjoy getting those very cool cards. Those are definitely going to be very hard to come by and very precious going on into the future. Beyond that, we're gonna get new history packs every two years. Uh, so in 2024, we will be receiving the history pack two, which will have things like Monarch, Tales of Aria, and Everfest released in it. So if you need those cards, you need to buy those sets that are currently out now, uh, or you'll have to wait until 2024 to get the reprint set. Uh, and notably, the reprint set has no foils. It's all just white border, non-foil cards. Um, LSS then went on to talk about how they want to lean more into the uh, characters and the story that they've been pushing for their game. And that's really encouraging because while Fab is a great competitive game, you can't 
only compete all the time. People have to have fun. People have to relax and people need to have something to tie themselves to these characters that they really like. You know, how many Azalea, Levia, Reinar, uh, you know, Kano players do you know that don't really go to locals or tournaments very often because they know that they're going to be at a disadvantage. Whereas those players might have a ton of fun just playing their hero in a story mode campaign against bosses and doing challenges and events um, through something like player versus envir uh, environment content. Which takes us to player versus environment is now an official announced thing that LSS is going to be doing. Uh, for those unfamiliar, player versus environment is like you playing a video game, right? You have a group of players and you play against the computer, you play against the predetermined environment, whatever that is. So it'll be very interesting to see how LSS approaches this, um, being able to go on epic adventures with your friends and fellow gamers, as they say right here, and just have a bunch of fun with all these cards that we have, experience the heroes, you get to experience them in a completely different way than just head to head, you know, brutal competitive play. A big announcement that I want to make in tandem with this announcement is that when I was first uh, designing my own card games back in 2019, I pictured a game that was a adventure card game that would be able to be played 1v1, but also in PvE. I worked on that for a long time. I did a lot of different prototypes and variations. And then when I started playing Flesh and Blood last year in 2021, I stopped developing stuff i stopped really focusing on it because i've just been really loving fab so much but i also thought like wow this is exactly the kind of system that the game that i was making would need and people are already talking about pve then so i'm like well i've got other things i have to be doing so maybe they'll come up with their own stuff the fact that pve is now an official thing means that i'm extremely excited because this is exactly the type of thing that i wanted out of a card game and lss is going to be delivering it on their own what does that mean for me and the channel? Well, as someone who spent a lot of time developing card games and who really enjoys that process, and who's also gotten my own artwork commissioned by professional artists to fund and like art and uh, you know have cards for my game, uh, I will be excited to be developing my own PVE content cards as well as um, my own custom cards going forward. So I will be making those first available on Patreon. There will be a separate new tier that you'll have to go find there to get access to that. But I will be releasing custom classes, custom talents, custom bosses and stories uh, as the game uh, gets more developed and mature. And I will be very excited to be sharing that with all of you. And then after a certain amount of time has passed, those assets will be available to the public. Uh, it won't be paywalled forever, but I do want to make it exclusive to the people that have been supporting the channel. And um, yeah, it's really exciting. And I can give you guys a quick taste of one of the characters I just came up with the other day. Um, here we go. We've got a light wizard hero. Uh, this is some original art that I had commissioned by uh, a very uh, good friend of mine who goes by Nomin Art, Nomin Dart on uh, Instagram. You can find their amazing work there. And um, this is a wizard who once per turn, your first wizard card that you play each turn gains, put this card into your hero's soul. And as an instant, you can banish a card from your soul to play your next wizard this turn as an instant. And yes, that's right. You can do the instant multiple times per turn. For PVE content, balance doesn't really matter as long as you're not overshadowing everybody else at the table. And this ability lets you either play two spells a turn or play one spell and bank up resources to have a bigger turn later. And in my testing so far, it's been a ton of fun, especially to combine Halo, Vestige, Storm Striders, and Metacarpus with cards that already exist, like Tome of the Aether Wind, Aether Spindle, and so many more. This card is a lot of fun, and I can't wait to show you guys the rest of the cards that I designed to go with it, and as well as all the other heroes and talents and classes that I will be making going forward. So keep your eyes on that and look forward to it. Beyond that, LSS had a couple more notes for us to talk about mainly the official support of the commoner format, which is going to be a competitive format where you're only allowed to use common cards in your main deck of 40 cards. You'll basically be playing Blitz, but with lower power level, lower power ceiling. And uh, you also won't be able to use majestic and higher equipments. You'll be having to use rare and lower. So that includes weapons and such. So that's very exciting because, you know, a lot of people don't have hundreds and hundreds of dollars to dump into playing Flesh and Blood, but they love the game. 
and it's a better thing to be able to have everyone on the same playing field, but still be competing and still be playing their best and have high level play even with a different card pool. So I think this is really cool and I can't wait to have people get into this because it seems like a lot of fun. And I think that I would also enjoy doing this so that I could get to try out different heroes without having to break the bank. Going beyond that, um, they're going to be changing how ELO works. Basically, this only matters if you are at the top of the competitive world. But basically, if you play in these events listed here and you win games, you will have a higher rating. And if you lose games, you will have a lower rating. And uh, the higher rating you have will eventually help you get into the bigger tournaments, such as um, you know various other pro tours and world championships. So um, that can reward players who have consistent good performances over time, while not necessarily excluding players that kind of come onto the scene and just knock everyone's socks off. All other big things is banning and restricted list. Um, they have done away with the idea of a restricted list entirely. Instead, they're gonna be using a suspended list, which is effectively a soft ban list where a card will be banned for a certain amount of time until a condition is met, such as until a certain date, until a hero is living legend, or until the next announcement. So it's a way for LSS to have a more, uh, you know, dynamic approach to balancing the game without having to uh, commit to some hard decisions. They can say, hey, we're gonna try banning this card for a while, see what happens. Uh, especially for Blitz, they're just wanting to really go hard on Blitz and really ban a lot of things to try and get that format kind of uh, a bit more balanced, which is great. I think that the game could definitely use some more aggressive balancing. Um, and another big thing is that for Living Legend, uh, now they've instituted a policy where when a character Living Legends, they take their iconic weapon with them. Bravo will take Anothos, Katsu will take Kadachis, and yes, our girl Prism will be taking Luminaris when she inevitably rotates out. Prism is extremely strong, and while she didn't have a ton of Living Legend points until this ProQuest season, and might not get more for a long time, if Prism ever does hit that Living Legend status, she'll be taking her Luminaris with her, and any future Light Illusionists will have to make do with other options. Very cool though. Uh, specifically with Living Legend, a lot of people have been worried about like, oh, what happens if Prism Living Legends? What will I do? I only like playing Prism or I really love playing Prism. Well, LSS has recovered and I'm excited to share with you that LSS is saying that they're going to have a Legends format. Eventually, there will be a format where people can play all of the best heroes that have ever existed and, quote, do the most powerful things possible. That's pretty exciting for a format where you basically take the gloves off and you can really go and just go to the sky's the limit to do the craziest things that you can think of. And uh, whenever Prism does get there, I'll be right there with them to uh, just slap around the strongest things that we can because that's a lot of fun. Um, however, that's not gonna happen for some time. Um, they're gonna make sure it hits a critical mass where they have enough characters to play in that format. So it's not going to be something that's gonna happen soon, but uh, just know that that is on the horizon and is a thing you can look forward to. And that's about it. So thank you all for watching. Just to reiterate about the PvE stuff, I am going to be making player versus environment content, such as custom classes, talents, and heroes. And those will be on my Patreon at patreon.com slash D-O-Z-R, Dozer. Um, and I'll be able to make custom bosses and stories and campaign modules, just as I had always intended with my own game. You've gotten a little bit of taste of the art that I've gotten commissioned and the design that I might take with some things. So hopefully that interests you and I can see you over there. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. Be sure to leave a subscribe if you want to see more Prism and Flesh and Blood content. And be sure to leave a like and a comment to say what you liked about the video or if you have any notes for improvement for me. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay cool and take it easy. Thank you so much for watching. This video and videos like it are made possible thanks to viewers like you. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, comment, or consider subscribing for more flesh and blood content. Additionally, I'd like to give a special shout out to all of the patrons who help make this video content possible, starting with the Dreamweaver tier patron, Tara Blitz. Thank you so much for your continued support and helping make this channel thrive. Moving on, we've got the Sentinel tier patrons, which is the current tier which allows coaching sessions to be scheduled with me to talk about your flesh and blood needs. We have Bond, David Romish, Exploding Potatoes, Frederick Lundovic, Jacob, Joe Ginoli, Michael Lynch, P13, TR2U, Ronnie Martin, Tim J, and Todd Stewart. Thank you all so much for your support. It means the world, and I could not do this without you guys.
Moving on, we have the Herald tier patrons. Thank you to everyone who helped support the channel on the Herald tier, and hope you enjoy your access to deck techs, strategy, the patron community, and all the other stuff that comes along with that. Starting with Alex Enslow, Andy Lee, Callum Bousfield, Carlos Carrero, Christopher D. Bates, Douglas DeJong, Ike Vic Hagen, Eric Borg, Francesco Lorenzi, Henrik, Jake Hitzos, Jake Arms, Jake Bennett Dwyer, Joel Wilhelm, John N. Downey Jr., Michael Stowell, Moonshaker, Muskrat Tuck, Nicholas Astner, Oxalotti, Raymond Scott, Starman Jones, Ty Craig, Valentin N., Will Fry, and Zombie Z. Finally, for the Spectral Shield tier patrons, we've got Andrew Good, Bryce Morgan, Drew Wagners, Rachel, and Sarazar. Thank you all so much for all of your support, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.